If you're chronically online like me, you've probably had to make some sacrifices, whether it's to binge a TV show. I've been waiting for you. Have a late night gaming session. No, get the camera! Keeping up with your favourite streamer. Hi, honey. Or God forbid, going out drinking and being sociable. Maybe you're even procrastinating on sleep to watch this video. We've all decided to stay up way past any reasonable hour, willingly letting go of the comfort of your bed and a productive next day. But sometimes it's an empowering, intoxicating experience to choose to be awake when no one else is. When you can completely be yourself in this dark bastion between suns. When you can see the world around you in a different way with the stars being your window to the rest of the universe. When you can finally be alone. But what if you were stuck there if you didn't have a choice? That's what it's like for Genta Nakami and Isaki Magari, the two leads of Insomniacs After School. Two insomniacs fighting to stay awake during the day and struggling to sleep every night. The inciting incident of the show is that Genta wants to sleep. He just like me for real. And during class is sent to get some supplies from the school observatory. What's that? Your school doesn't have an observatory? Cringe. Well, maybe you just didn't notice it between your student protest era hidden room and your school's underground sweatshop. The observatory is now just used as a storeroom, as the astronomy club has been disbanded for a couple of years, and Genta realises this is the perfect place to get some shut eye. However, as he's about to lay down, he sees someone else already asleep, who he accidentally wakes up, Magari. This is how these two find out about each other's secrets of suffering from insomnia, and how they begin to get closer, one sleep at a time. Genta is portrayed as your, oh you know, your average run of the mill protagonist. He's smart, kind, introverted, in good shape, kind of a loner, you know, all the stuff that makes a self insert. The crazy thing is, he's not a self insert protagonist. Genta actually has discernible interests, likes, dislikes, motivations. He has drive, he has power, he gets hungry, he devours. In most romance anime, a self-insert protagonist would just be thinking about the girl, but Bro just wants to sleep. He also gains a genuine interest in astronomy, and wants to be able to take good night photos for their club so he and Magari can continue to use the school observatory as their place to sleep. I really can't stress enough that in this show, the protagonist is not a self-insert. He may be soft-spoken and reserved, but he isn't passive. He has desires and acts on them, which I think has been a really good shift in recent years, that in romance and romance light shows, writers have been able to move on from pandering to their male audience with a protagonist whose only discernible characteristics are that they share some of the same hobbies as the viewer, mainly that they read manga and watch anime, How original. and maybe even that they're a gamer. Daring today, aren't we? The trend is shifting. The trend is shifting so that these protagonists can be differentiated without flying off the other end by being super loud mouthed and overbearing to show that they aren't a self insert. Instead, authors and mangaka can write characters who are still relatable, soft spoken and introverted, but have enough ambition and internal struggle so that they are their own character. A great waifu is when the female lead is well written. A great romance is when both characters are well written. But how is the female lead of this show? It's quite common in romance to pair up characters who are different, so that they can make up for each other's weaknesses and find a nice balance. Well, Magari is friendly, extroverted, and He's pretty SpongeBob. Since Genta is introverted, he is able to attempt to sleep during class because the people around him tire him out. Magri seems to get her energy by being with her friends, so can't do the same. While she might be feeling exhausted from the lack of sleep she had during the night, her body won't shut down when she's around her friends. So she comes up with a plan. Magri starts a rumour that the reason the astronomy club shut down a few years ago is because a club member did a Sayori at the observatory, and that her ghost still haunts that area of the school, leaving it free for her to sneak there unnoticed and get the respite she desperately needs. A rumour that everyone's heard of and believes since they all avoid the observatory, but none of the teachers feel obligated to correct. I like how Insomnia affects the two characters differently seemingly because of their character types. Being around people makes Genta more exhausted 
which manifests as irritation for those around him, making him somewhat disliked and viewed as haughty when he excels at his work. While Magri can put off her tiredness by getting a boost of energy from those around her, which has led her to having to find a safe space when that energy inevitably runs out. I will say that I'm not an expert in insomnia, so I don't know if these are realistic ways that insomnia can be expressed, but this is the impression I've been getting from the show, and I do think it's a good way to build character. I may call this a romance show, but watching Magri and Genta become a couple isn't my main motivation for watching it. And it's not the character's motivation either. They want to protect the oasis they've built where they can escape from the world for a bit together. They both have their own lives. Magari has her friends. Genta has a friend. But Genta also starts to get really passionate with photography and the beauty of the night sky, something that I too share. The two do clearly care for each other, but they're not at a stage where they desire a relationship from each other. And hey, the majority of the time in these anime, the audience interest is invested to the point on if the main couple will sleep together, and these two slept together in episode 1, and I'm still invested. Seeing these two interact is the main draw of this show, as they work so well together. Their romance can be a slow burn, as they currently fulfil each other's needs in different ways. Whereas in a waifu show, other goals outside of the romance are annoying as the audience don't care about development, but they want to see their self-insert get laid. That's the main difference between a waifu show and a romance show. Hey, I'm not judging, I enjoy those shows too. I'm very much content to watch these two slowly spend more time with each other, do stuff together with their friends, as they both develop as people all the way to their happily ever after. There is one little roadblock, of course. If you've watched the show, you may have noticed in the OP two sequential shots. One of a group of kids walking down a hospital corridor, followed by the teenage Magari walking on her own. Magari has already mentioned she was not the healthiest of children, but that's okay. She's clearly better now. Just because she had some kind of chronic illness doesn't mean it'll flare back up. That's totally not why it's been included in her character. It's not like there's a precedent for this where the happy-go-lucky, positive girl who balances out perfectly with a male lead to get him to come out of his shell has an illness flare back up. That's... <clears throat> that's never happened. If you don't think this shot of the OP, this one-liner, or her pills are indication enough, she also drops this one-liner. Oh yeah, that seems normal. Genta doesn't really understand what this means, and I feel Magari is going to be just as indirect, but more aggressive with these ominous lines to him going forward. Guys usually can't tell if a girl is flirting with them when they're being indirect, and Magari is bringing it up to another level by giving her terminal illness mix signals. There is a silver lining, however. The manga is still ongoing. We don't know how this story ends. Magari could recover, but I am expecting some turbulence along the way. If Magari does indeed pass away, the story could continue by having Genta continue to grow. Self-improvement comes from the self, and not from others. So if Genta's growth as a character has been spurred on by Magri, he could learn how to self-improve when there isn't a girl there to help him do this. Which is something I think is very important and a lot of romance falls down this pitfall. Your partner makes you better, but without them, you should be able to love yourself to be able to keep improving yourself. I think this show has great potential to be one of the best slow burn romances in anime, and unless the story grinds to a halt, I think I will be impressed by whatever direction the mangaka takes these characters in. My gut reaction is that this could be the new Your Lie in April, now that that show is almost 10 years old, and if it does stick the landing, I just hope that in today's age, this story won't be a flavour of the month and disappear in the constant stream of content like a lot of amazing shows that just aren't about world-ending threats or have bodacious stakes that are about a small group of people who are experiencing a common struggle set with a slightly unique but beautiful backdrop. I hope stories like that are still able to endure in a constellation of greats.